Hello, gamers. I made it. Easter really put the long in long weekend. <laughs> um, it was, uh, it was, I don't know, not my favorite four days of my life, for sure. I was starting to get sick, I would say, around Thursday. So I was like, oh, good, I have like a day uh, and, and a little bit more, a day and a weekend to recover. Um, it's just a cold. So, so slow your roll. And it, I'm basically good now. Um, even though I'd say I probably had about 90 minutes of total uh, personal time sans Peloton this weekend. So if you amortize that out over four days, I don't know, it's what, like 22 and a half minutes a day? So I'm feeling pretty refreshed, as you can imagine. Um, starting Friday, my wife also got sick. The baby did not get sick, which is nice. However, we did do um, like intensive potty training this weekend, which means uh, that for four days, my kid did not have a, a diaper or pants on, and I had to watch her like a hawk in order to make sure she didn't poop or pee on the ground. And she did pee on the ground a few times, but that's to be expected. No poop on the ground, which is nice. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to report that she did at least. I'd say we made a little bit of progress on potty training this weekend. But the, the illness combined with um, my wife's illness, which meant that rather than resting, I was actually like doing more while sick. Combined with the 96 hours straight of potty training cleaning up like bodily fluids off of the hardwood combined with the fact that until yesterday it was like a monsoon uh all weekend i don't know if anyone else here is is in the lower mainland i went out for a, a walk to take the baby for a nap we put a diaper on for for an hour and a half so she could take a nap went out for a walk i had the it was so rainy i had to hold my phone in my hand, so it got rained on. Because if I put it in my pocket, there was like a millimeter of water in my pants pocket and like a millimeter of water in my jacket pocket and my jacket is waterproof. So explain it, to, I, I had to basically sack my phone to the water that was falling from the sky so it didn't sit in water that was pooled in the clothes that I was wearing. It was crazy. I don't know what is wrong with you, and I, I hate to start with so much acetylcholine. Did you hear the last, well, I've only been live for like four minutes. Did you hear the last four minutes? First thing you come in is, uh, where's Big Ambitions on YouTube? Are you, are you listening? Are you, are you just waiting for your turn to talk? I can't even imagine the psychology of somebody that would, that would be the first message they would type in chat. I'm not asking for you to be like, oh, you know, Oh, poor baby, poor baby, because that's condescending. But, like, at least... It's like you walked into the restaurant when the stools are already up on the table, and you're like, hey, uh, do you have space for, like, a party of eight? They're, like, they're going to say no. They're going to say, get the hell out of the restaurant. You're walking in asking for, uh, hey, is it happy hour? Bitch, it's my happy hour, because we're closing in, in 15 minutes. Don't you see me with the weird, nondescript... Pale yellow spray bottle? Get out of my damn store. I am opening. But also, this is my happy hour. Because I'm like... I'm just thrilled to be live, honestly. <clears throat> One of the reasons that is so annoying to get comments that are like... Oh, I wish I had like a 25-hour work week. Is because I wish my ass had like a 55-hour work week. <laughs> I would love to have been playing some video games and... and Farming five gifted subscriptions from the librarian like we got just now instead of cleaning up fucking uh, piss on the floor for three days straight. No, you don't? D yes, I do. Probably not with like a normal job, but with this job, absolutely. It wasn't all bad, though. We made some progress on the, on the potty training. We had like a little Easter egg hunt inside because it was so rainy on on Sunday um I still I did 90 minutes of 
of Peloton, even while sick, I'm not your doctor. I'm not telling you that you should do the same thing. I'm just saying maybe I'm built a little different. So what's that? That's 90 minutes, pardon me, times five. It's seven and a half hours of cardiovascular exercise. Hey, RDX 1138, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Also, it's not really fair. It's not really like an apples to apples comparison. But I did weigh in on uh, right after my Saturday Peloton ride. I weighed in at 170.4, which is like a landmark for me. It's, that's like my lowest weight probably since um, July 2007. I know you're probably like, I, damn, I was in like the third grade then. Or like, I don't know, the first grade. I was. I was in my, in between my first and second year of university. Was that in metric? 77? 77 kg, two pounds. Yeah, around 70, 77.4. What's that in stone? 12.8. 12 stone in case you are you are english pilled i did think I, I can't really figure out how to get the tweet to work but um the the tweet the gist of the tweet is something like this english people people from england when someone tries to speak british english and then it would be like a woman covering her mouth and the caption would be like they called the chili bin a cooler something like that you see those tweets of Zoomers going high school in the 2000s was so cool and people quote tweeting them with proof it wasn't? Yeah, but I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I've, I've really, obviously I've aged um, forward. I, I'm older than I've ever been and that continues to be true. But I think like conception, like spiritually I've kind of aged, not backwards, but forward slower than I've physically aged forward, which I'm not sure is good. But I do kind of find myself, listen, it was not, I, I didn't go to high school in America for one. And there were parts of high school in the mid-2000s that were fucked up, or the early 2000s and the, the mid-2000s that were fucked up. But like, my high school experience, I, I would not trade that for a Zoomer's current high school experience. I'm not saying the Zoomer is right that like, oh, the high school in the mid-2000s was not political. But I'm like, damn, I wouldn't trade my high school experience for like the average, what, like 18-year-old? Did ninth and 10th grade like remote learning during a, a global pandemic? Came back to 11th grade. The kids you last saw in 8th grade are now like full-grown adults, but you haven't spoken face-to-face -face in two and a half years. And then like everything's being filmed 24-7 at all times. I'm not saying it was perfect. I'm just... I'm just saying. I went to I know people who went to high school during COVID. There's just sections of world history they don't know. I think every graph of every metric except res respiratory illness from 2019 to 2023 looks like exactly the same. It's like everything's on like an upward trajectory and then March 2020 hits. It doesn't matter if you're talking about IQ, stock market, uh, you know, occupancy rate in downtown offices. They all crater like 40 percent and then they burp, 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 they're creeping back up and then they go, oh, it's Delta. And then burr, they creep back and they're Omicron and, burr, and then they're they're sort of like recovering now. Every graph is like exactly the same. Household debt didn't follow that trend? Yeah, but one over household debt followed that trend. <laughs> I guess if, if, what, if, it, if it has the exact opposite, you could say that about anything. House prices are messed up? Yeah, but one over house prices followed that graph, right? You should be chairman of the Fed. I think I've uncovered a global conspiracy on Twitter. So, so the Twitter for you algorithm, it's gone hyper. At first it showed me like videos of car crashes and I was like, this is more entertaining than like everybody I follow just tweeting, sorry, I'm not going to be live today, myself included. Um, but then like they, they figured out somehow that I'm like into finance and it's become a disaster because now I get all these tweets from like meme finance accounts 
But you know what's interesting? There is no bullish meme finance account. Every single one is called like fake Jerome Powell. And they've tweeted every day for three years about how like the debasement of the American dollar, um, the Chinese yuan is about to become the reserve currency of the world. Like uh, the, the, the bubble is, is permanently about to collapse. Where's the, where's the bullish um, finance meme accounts that are like, uh, oh, everything is like mostly fine. Oh, I know. Hey, first off, Riberu13, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. They, they, they don't exist because it's harder to sell uh, subscriptions to your Substack newsletter if you're like, hey, mostly everything's just okay. But if you're like, hey, the world's about to collapse and the only way you can prepare yourself is to read my Substack for five bucks a month, then, I mean, I understand the hustle. Joe Weisenthal. Hey, jo Joe Weisenthal is my, he's one of my favorite finance Twitter accounts because he just tweets about minting the trillion dollar coin and then stuff that I like just jokes about Bitcoin, but on both sides. He, he, he tries to rile up the, the Bitcoin maximalists and he also tries to rile up the cryptocurrency haters. He's just like a big, he's a big troll on Twitter and I respect that. Plus, Odd Lots is, a, is an entertaining show. I mean, now we're like, I'm 10 minutes back and now I'm talking about economics. I thought I fucking hated Nassim Talib. And then I heard him on Odd Lots and I was like, wait a minute, this, this guy's spitting. It, the whole episode was just him on his like uh, Turtle Beach headset calling everybody on earth an idiot. But maybe it was because he opened the, um, he opened the interview by saying, deadlifting is bad for your heart. So I started road cycling. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> he's just like me. Don't skip Bo Horvat. He apologized. There's just, I don't listen. <laughs> Bo Horvat was Vancouver's captain. He played on the team for nine years. He got traded to the New York Islanders. The New York Islanders are in a playoff push. They won a game, which is rare for them. He got interviewed after the game, and they said, how does this compare to like the audience that you've had for the rest of your career? And he said, it's way better than Vancouver. I'll tell you that for free which is just like an unforced error, okay? Yeah, I mean, it's been unbelievable. It's a lot better than Vancouver, I'll tell you that for free. I get it, he's riling up the hometown fans. It's like, it's kayfabe. At the same time, it, it, someone linked the 50 cent uh, gif, and I was like, that's the, exactly right. What, what did he say, say fuck, fuck me you? for? I was just sitting here, I was rooting for your ass. And then we, we traded him, and I'm like, best of luck to the New York Islanders, and, and all of a sudden, he's like, fuck everybody in Vancouver. And then he, he apologized, but I'm still, I hope that the Islanders miss the playoffs because not because like I'm super bitter, but because this motherfucker needs to understand comedic timing. I understand comedic timing. You're playing Hitman. You're like, oh, I may never lose again. You're like three seconds away from being shot in the head. He needs to learn comedic timing. You don't poke the bear until you already got the X next to your team's name. Money Puck has you at a 55% chance. To, to make the playoffs right now, okay? You, you're more likely to make it than not to make it, but why would you tempt fate like that? It just doesn't make sense. And I was like, I may buy his house just to spite him. Then I looked at the price and I was like, no thanks. Also, I don't want to live in West Point Gray. I park on the street. Hey, you can't park there. That's my parking spot. Actually, anybody can park on the street. Yeah, but that's where I like to park. Eat my ass, Grandpa. Fucking point grace, piece of crap. You see the interview with all the people? Uh, probably not. But if you're a Vancouver Canucks fan, you might have seen it. It was an interview with um, Canucks who signed here in free agency. And it's about how much they love living in Vancouver. JT Miller, motherfucker, said, I love living in Vancouver because I hate having neighbors. Bitch, if we're in a housing crisis, you motherfucker. What are you talking about? You hate having neighbors. Where the hell do you live, dude? There's, there's houses, condos, apartment buildings, townhouses, everywhere. Where are you? Must be in fucking Southlands or something. Shaughnessy, piece of shit. Don't even get me. It's fucking Chilliwack. Point Roberts. Anyway. He bought all the houses around him. On his salary, probably not. I mean, he's making a paltry, what, $8 million a year next year? 
you know, they call them dulls. Um, but the thing is, they're anything but. Now, let me tell you, I haven't done a, a, a dull in four or five days. Um, <laughs> I don't think today is going to be the day where we get um, a, a super fast tradle. Okay, because the total export is $13.4 million, which is really small. Like, that's basically um, in the Wallace and Fatuna level. And I'm saying Wallace and Fatuna because I know statistically in like a few hundred days, if we just keep it around in the head, it may come back. Okay. 4,500 kilometers away from Bhutan. Um, could this be a Southeast Asian island off the coast of like Vietnam? <laughs> it's just, I'm like, but I don't know which one of them count as principalities and which one of them are just grandfathered under the umbrella of their mother country. Because like some of these are independently administered territories and some of them are, are like, you know, crown colonies like Canada. Okay, I, I, I mean, we go straight back to the Pacific Islands as we always do. Do we start with the Solomon Islands? It's west of the Solomon Islands, somewhere between Bhutan and the Solomon Islands. <laughs> it's, um, this is a hard one to picture in your head. I feel like this can't work on, like, on my brain right now. Is there even anything that's basically... Well, I, listen, I don't know. <laughs> Bhutan? It's like north of India. Solomon Islands. So I have to close my eyes to visualize things. I'm, I'm picturing an, a three-dimensional apple spinning in my head right now. The Solomon Islands must be like relatively east of New Zealand. I'm triangulating the position. I, this sounds crazy. Just at least give me a Vietnam. I, it's not going to be right, but at least maybe we can get some positioning. It's south of Vietnam... I, I can't believe I'm just going to type C and then look for some stuff that makes sense. How about H? How about the Netherlands Antilles? Mm, it's about 19,000 kilometers away uh, to the east <laughs> from Netherlands Antilles. Um, how about a, a B? How about a R? How about a P? How about a J? Mm, Fiji? No, they got to export like... I know this sounds stupid, but it's right, right? Even just the water must be like so much more than that. How about an F? How about a V? How about a X? How about Christmas Island? <laughs> No way. All right. That's Tradle, baby. All skill, skill, skill. I don't even know where Christmas Island is. Plus, you really give me Christmas Island on Easter Tuesday? I don't even know how an ex gave us Christmas Island as well, but that's, that's a miracle. I, I needed that today. Oh, it's south of Vietnam. Of course, about 2,000 kilometers south of Vietnam. 1,400 kilometers away. Algeria is a goaded starting guess, man. Like, this is the midpoint of the world right here. I'm going to say that it's... Take me to Egypt, please. Mm, further away. Okay, take me to Cote d'Ivoire. Ooh, it's adjacent. Take me to Togo. Senegal. Ooh. Every time. Um, Mali. Mali's landlocked, though. Remember that. Oh. <laughs> um, Morocco. Nope. Liberia. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Burkina Faso. Nope. Uh, did I do Senegal? I definitely did Senegal, right? Yep. Um... So this is Nigeria. Are you Ghana? 
Nope. Okay. Uh, never mind. Maybe you're in Nigeria. You know what? I feel like Austin Powers trying to unstick the the Doctor Evil Evil Corp uh, passenger carrier right now. Like I just I keep correcting in the wrong direction. Where are you? Are you Equatorial Guinea? Yes. Ek Guinea? Did you mean ek Equatorial Guinea? Can you help me out here? <laughs> can I can I have some help? Guinea? The mystery country is Guinea. Okay. There's did you mean ek? Okay, today's guess is 13. We got there though. Paramount Pictures, I mostly know because of Canada's Wonderland. It's August 1994. Number two strikes me as Jurassic Park. That's not a Paramount movie, maybe. Um, <laughs> just let me think about it for a second. Um, so you made $188 million in 1994. That's a lot. This is going to be a movie I've heard of. This is also going to be a movie I've heard of. Opening at 15 million? No. Week two, 15 million? Probably heard of it as well. I don't know what any of these are right off the top, though. Maybe you've never heard of that. Probably have heard of this. Okay, let's start. Give me, give me the actor. Harrison Ford. This is the fugitive, bitch. Fuck. <laughs> it's clear and present danger. Let's go! I know, because I, I had... Um, Adam's family on VHS as a kid, and it always opened with like, here's some more Paramount movies that have come to uh, home video recently. And I just remember George Takei's voice because the it was such a cheesy commercial that ran before the movie you just purchased. It was him on like the deck of the whatever the ship from I think it was actually the he was on the deck of the Enterprise for some reason, despite the fact that he's from the original Star Trek. It was like, hi, I'm George Takei. But you may remember me for playing Zulu on Star Trek. And then he would be like, here's some videos that have just come out from Paramount Pictures on home video. Clear and present danger. He's not Zulu? What's his name? I haven't seen any Star Trek, man. Except Star Trek 2009. Zulu! Come on! I thought he would... When I said you people were like, Zulu's wrong, I thought I... I thought he was Spock or something. When he said, I do, he never said what he did. There's no way true lies and clear and present danger were at like the same time. Can we get genre? Action thriller. True lies? <laughs> it is true lies. <laughs> How were there two? Aren't these two Jack Ryan movies? How could these two Jack Ryan movies be in theaters within three weeks of each other? No? For my entire life, I have thought that True Lies and Clear and Present Danger is a, are both Jack Ryan movies, which is crazy, because I've seen True Lies, like within two years ago, or within the last two years. Just the whole time, I guess it just never dawned on me that like, his name isn't even Jack Ryan. I don't even know what his name is in the movie. I don't know. It's just like it was a weird blind spot. Like at no point in the movie did I go, why are they calling Jack Ryan Harry? I guess my brain was probably off when I was watching it on TV anyway. Okay. In this New Line Cinema, we might know. We should know it. It probably grossed almost $100 million by the time it left. It's a, a Jim Carrey movie from 1994. It's The Mask, baby. Somebody stop me. Holy cow, this would easily make $400 million at the box office today. Unfortunately, under the mask's influence, Ipkiss also robs a bank, which angers junior crime lord Dorian Tyrell, whose goons get blamed for the heist. This is a great weekend at the multiplex, man. Can you imagine going to the, the movie theater and you have a choice of clear and present danger, Forrest Gump, the mask, true lies, and like whatever the hell this is? No wonder people are going to see the movies. They're, they're going like two times a week back then. I don't even remember when I watched it for the first time, but I, I was telling Kate this weekend. I remember 
the first time I was introduced to the mask, my parents took me to the drive-in movie theater. It wasn't in 1955, for the record. <laughs> Pardon me. First movie, Monkey Trouble. Anna Paquin, classic uh, kids movie where like a monkey escapes from like a makeup testing lab or, you know, like a science facility or something like that. And then they get into all sorts of hijinks. They try to capture the monkey, but Anna Paquin like saves the monkey or something like that. I don't really remember the whole thing. You're, if you've seen one monkey escapes movie, you've seen them all. Second feature was The Mask. My parents were like, just this movie's going to be too scary for you. Just go to sleep in the back. My ass actually did. I was not the kind of kid, by the way, I'm being told it's Stora Birch, not Anna Paquin, my mistake, Stora Birch. I, uh, was, if my parents said, don't watch this movie, it's going to traumatize you, I said, all right, I'm just going to sleep. And I, honestly, I think I would have been five at this moment, like August 12th, 1994. Um, I think that would have traumatized me a little bit when he like, tries to pull the mask off and it stretches his whole face and stuff like that. I don't know if it would have traumatized me when he got shot with a bunch of, uh, with, with a bunch of Tommy guns and then he spits the bullets back at the henchman or when he swallows a three sticks of dynamite with a timer uh, silly putty to it and then when it explodes in his stomach, he says, that was a spicy meatball. Also the mask, when he's, I always remember when he, do you know the classic moment in a Jim Carrey movie where he's like walking to his place of work, but he meets like all these side characters that you're never going to see again. And they're like, hi, Stanley. And he goes, hey, uh, how's the wife? Keep working on that golf game. I remember the, he meets someone or maybe it's not Jim Carrey. Maybe it's the cop. Either way, he meets someone and he, he says like, hey, Tony. You got to stop eating all the deli meats because of the nitrates. Like, that's stuck in my head. That's why I, I'm getting the nitrate-free beef jerky. That one's not in the mask. <clears throat> nitrates. The mask. Nitrates. Liar, liar. Neither of those turned up. Quotes. Nitrates. End quotes. Jim Carrey. Don't eat the gabagool, Grandma. It's nothing but fat and nitrates. R slash circle jerk sopranos. I've got to I've got to get a source on this one, okay? Because <laughs> I don't think it's from the circle jerk sopranos. <laughs> movie to movie. The Book of Eli to Secret Agents. <laughs> um, this is impossible. Because I don't know what Secret Agents is. Um, is this is this Monica Bellucci and Sean Penn in between roles? I don't know. Vincent Cassell, Monica Bellucci. So we got okay. We got to get to Denzel Washington. Step one is you bring yourself to um, America instead of Italy. So we go Vincent Cassell, and then we go whatever Ocean's movie he was in. Let's go with 13 because that was like a return to form. And then we've got to find Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington is in, in, in terms of ensemble movies, he's in Training Day with Ethan Hawke. He's in, um, let me, I can f fucking get to this one. He's in Flight with John Goodman, George Clooney, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? John Goodman, Flights, Denzel Washington. The brain is, is cracked today, man. We got there. Not bad. I was also thinking American Gangster. I was like, you got Common. You got Russell Crowe. I don't know who else is in American Gangster. I've seen it a couple times, though. It's a good movie. Don Cheadle was also in Flight. My ass catching strays when I, I saw a Flight once, nine years ago on Netflix probably like in bed. You're lucky I remember John Goodman. To remember two actors from each movie is like, do you know how much space that takes up in the brain? Okay, this is Quinn Hughes. I can tell you that for certain. He's a defenseman in the West, in the Central. Is Kale McCarr? 
Mm, it's not Kale McCarr. He plays for not Colorado. He's a young defenseman in the West. I'm just going to be honest. I'm, I'm turning my screen off. I'm on full screening. I'm going into my Wordle folder. I am, I'm opening it. I'm right-clicking on Hurtle. I'm deleting Hurtle. It said too many misses. I'm sorry. Goodbye. It's just too much. I said, like, uh, the first five, I'm, like, racking my brain for who it could be. And I, like, I come down. I know one player who fits all the criteria. It's not them. And then I go, all right, well, fuck, I guess I don't know it. That, that's one that needs some curation. To me, this looks like... Um, that right there, it looks like a Resident Evil. They're mid-sprint in Resident Evil 3. This looks like Mass Effect Andromeda. Skip me. Oh. This looks like Killing Floor 2. Hey! I'm not ashamed to say this. I think I hate every game that is just like you and your friends murder an unending uh, horde of enemies. You know what I think would be a sick inversion of the genre how about you and your friends go up against one boss who's like hard as fuck instead of just like yeah something like monster hunter actually monster hunter is like the it's the the perfect antidote to this for me i love devolve too but you guys aren't ready for that take also, I got an Evolve shirt at a media event in 2014. I have run in it. I've biked in it. I've worn it 200 times. That shit is... It's unkillable. It's got to be the oldest shirt that's still in the damn collection. It, it fits just as well as it did day one. It's not faded or anything. I got to figure out who they, who they printed with. Live longer than the game? Well, it lived longer than like almost any game that came out around that period. Like, Evolve only lasted like six months at best. <laughs> it, it, it outlasted like some very, very successful games from that period as well. My friend made me buy Evolve. Good, it's a, it's a good game. But people decided they didn't want it. Oh, it's a lot of work involved, and I'd rather just go... Oh, there's zombies on the right now. Tick, tick, tick. Oh, now there's zombies on the left. <clears throat> I, I should not guess Anthem, because in my head, I just... Um, every time I, I talk about Anthem, I just hear, Don't want to be you. Don't want to be just like you. What I'm saying is, this is the anthem. Throw all your hands up. So do you with the tip of you with me. Yeah. Anyone else do a Kendall Tool 30-minute pop punk ride this week? No? Okay. You know what? Actually, we know for a fact it's not a shooter. Maybe it's a strategy game, man. Maybe it's fucking RimWorld. Oh! It was made in Unity. It's isometric. From 2018. It's factorial. Nah, that's, that only came out in 2020, dummy. Game engine, no data. It's probably programmed in like C proper, if I had to guess. It's machine code. It's actually just manipulating the, uh, the logic gates directly on the microchip. Let me get a one-time clue, please. Oh, good. We know it's an indie strategy game from 2000. It's into the breach. Into the... Uh, no. No. Come on. Come on. Worst part is, I, I guarantee I fucking played this shit, man. 2018. What was I doing in my life? So you right turned 30. What were we playing? What were we playing? We were playing a little Children of Morta. <laughs> 
playing a little uh I don't know. I'm I I pass. Anybody know this? Among us? I I'd, I'd be surprised, man, but maybe it is Among Us. I wouldn't I guess it is a strategy game. That's fine. You got me on that one. Apparently Among Us though is not part of the Among Us saga. Single player. <laughs> Wrong saga. That's a tough one. I mean, maybe it's actually, like, one of the easiest ones. It's one of those things where... Do you ever see, like, um, oh, 99% of kindergartners can pass this test, but some adults can't? Sometimes knowledge is a burden. Just looking at this, to me, this is... This looks like 2008. Just sending it. It's 2005, okay. It's an advertisement. By the way, you know another thing that the For You algorithm has been serving me all the time on Twitter now? Is why can't we go back to this form of air travel? And it's always like um, people sitting in plush leather chairs. And then the, the flight attendant is wheeling like a, a 10 course dinner and carving like prime rib off of a roast. They're like, look at what happened to... Now we're all crammed into fucking little tiny... It's an ad, you moron! And shit, there was never a plane people went on, like in economy class, where people were rolling a buffet down the aisles. Are you crazy? It never happened. The shit was saw, shot on like a soundstage. No media literacy, man. It's, it's driving me insane. It's literally, if you zoomed out, if you took a picture of the picture being taken, there's like a set cut out on a Hollywood soundstage. People think it's a little aluminum tube in the fucking sky. Like they, they took off to do the ad campaign. Yeah, they were bringing up like whole roasted hams into the air. In the MD-80s. Listen, sorry. <laughs> also, like if they sold that shit... On a real plane now, your ass couldn't afford it. Like, no disrespect. They're never going to be doing that shit in economy. That, that's like a private plane experience. It would be like a $45,000 plane ticket for four hours. You'd be like, they expect me to pay that? No, bitch, they expect you to go to economy. Sit in your chair and watch two movies, and then guess what? You made it from L.A. to New York. Pack some Cheez-Its or like a, a turkey sandwich or something like that. Watch half a movie, take a cat nap, you're fucking there. Just relax. Your ass does not, you're in the sky for three and a half hours. You don't need a, a 10 course dinner. You know what's crazy about Americans? Listen, I'm going off. You talk to an American that flew from like New York to Chicago, they'll be like, oh, my legs are so fucking sore. How was your flight? Fucking sucked. There was turbulence. Fucking leg, P person in front of me reclined their seat. Oh, it's the worst three hours of my life. You talk to somebody from Texas, and you're like, how was the drive? They're like, oh, it was a breezy 12 hours. No big deal. What the fuck is wrong with you? Doesn't, you, you your shit's all backwards, man. It doesn't make any damn sense. Okay, anyway. This, this screams the 70s. It's the hair. It's the colors. The fact that TWA doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to say this is 72. We take those. <coughs> this has the vibe of like um, Rambo First Blood Part 2, where it's like, this film is dedicated to the brave Mujahideen fighters of Afghanistan. I basically just don't want any part of this photo. But it must be from... 80 to 88, because that's when Reagan was the president. So put me... I don't know. Honestly, he looks pretty ambitious here. I mean, this is a, this is a big meeting. Let's say that's a first-term Andy, 1982. I'll take that. 3902 kind of hurts me a little bit, because our, our benchmark for getting like an A is 4,000. But this is pretty good. I'm still pleased with that. Very modern house. Looks like the kind of house that someone would live in 
you know, on the television show Black Mirror, where everything is dystopian except for the architecture. Obviously, there's a Porsche in the, in the driveway. No neighbors. Tropical climate. We don't see... I'm going to imagine this has beachfront access. I'm going to say this is Hawaii. I'm going to say this is an $11 million house. That's too low. Okay, next clue. It's in Sunny Isles Beach, Florida. See, now I'm kind of losing it. This is in Florida. The house doesn't look that big. Still may have ocean access. But like Hawaii, could sort of see it. But, but Florida, now I'm like, I mean, you can ask for it. Will you receive it? I don't know. So we got to go at least 700000 over our last guess. I'm willing to take you to $13 million. That's too high. We're going to get it. We're, my radar was fucking bang on today. Holy, dude. Sure, it's nice. Whatever. We've been going to these open houses in Vancouver, too. This shit drives me crazy. I do not want a wine cellar. Like, I could just keep, like, a bottle of wine in my fridge or something like that. I could just keep, like, a... I don't need a special room that holds 200 bottles of wine. I'd rather just have like a bathroom or something like that. That's a part of the reason. I don't want a wine cellar because my ass, would, I have poor impulse control. I would just drink the wine. And I don't have an interest in, in collecting wine. I think you're just tempting fate with something like this. Give me a, a closet. I, you could always use another closet or like another you know, pantry or something like that. But I don't want, I don't want a space for 200 bottles of wine. And you're like, does it do anything else? People are like, well, you could also keep whiskey in it. They see someone in chat literally on the delay was like, you could also put whiskey in it. That doesn't solve the problem. This is crazy, man. You don't need this. You already got a fridge. Why not just get a wine fridge? I don't want a wine fridge. That's too much wine. You go buy a bottle of wine when you know you're going to have like a nice dinner. Split the bottle of wine, put it in the recycling bin, and you're good to go. You don't need to keep some inventory on hand. They're, they're always making more. Anyway, we know we got to be somewhere in the, in the 12 range here. 11.9. Pretty, pretty good. Couldn't you just use the room for something else? Not really. Like, it's it's temperature controlled and there's like built-in fucking like 64 little bottle holders you could you, all you could use it for is storing bottles i guess you could start collecting ships ships in bottles put your milk in there just remove it now you got to buy like a three million dollar house you got to pay like another hundred thousand dollars to get someone to rip the fucking bottle holders out of the, your wine cellar just make it a closet then if i wanted a wine cellar i'll turn it into a wine cellar I have no idea. I think you have to be rich to live here, though. Because, like, this is not, like, something you just go to a contractor and go, like, give me a number one. <laughs> this is, like, this is, like, you did this shit yourself in, like, AutoCAD or something like that. And then they got, like, the, it's geodesic, man. I gotta assume this is at least, like, it depends where it is, but start me at two. We were too high. I think that's what that means. It's in Twin Peaks, California. Take me to 1.4. We're still too high. It was built in 1977. Give me a 500,000. It's 1,500 square feet. <laughs> it started a little high. Yeah, dude, someone got a steal on this thing. Does it not have like a, a water and sewer hookup or something? Like, it's under five. Oh, no, it's over $500,000. It's in California, in the middle of the woods. They got a damn hot tub out there. Maybe it's a, a campfire or something. Over five, between 500 and 700. Previous, previous sales in 2019 for 385. <laughs> Um, okay, give me a 490 then. I mean, that's a huge appreciation in four years, man. Listing price was 665000 Give me a 530. 
Did I get it? Too bad. Try again tomorrow. It's 557. You're right. It was over 500. I went lower. <laughs> you believe that this the audacity of this uh, bitch, as they say on Twitter? The lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch? You bought the house three and a half years ago for $385,000. You had the audacity to list it for $665,000. Let it sit on the market for four months and then lost a hundred grand, but still like, I don't know, made like an 80% return on your investment. You wanted a list of her $2 million? I, I'm not saying that I would have paid $2 million for this. I am simply saying I thought somebody was stupid enough to pay $2 million for this. I'm not saying me. People pay a lot of money for stuff that I consider valueless. I'm not going to go see the listing. That's too far. It's like peeking in through their windows. Like what? <laughs> Shampoo is a good answer. Wine cellars? Yeah, wine cellars. That's a big one. Also, home theaters. I'm not talking about like a, a nice TV and a sound system. I'm talking about like a, a room in your basement where you put a huge shitty TV. Just give me the room, man. I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll make it into something else and then I'll just watch like the mask on my phone or something like that. It's driving me crazy. I'll play some Time Guesser, okay? But I know what this is. It's like one fucker came in here who was talking about Time Guesser for like half an hour. And then, like, all the bleeding hearts are like, why has he not mentioned anything about Time Guesser yet? Why has he not mentioned it? And then it's like it becomes a rabble. Like, they're trying to fight City Hall. He left already? Good. <laughs> we'll play it. It was getting annoying to see the message, like, literally every time I looked at chat. Should I play Time Guesser? Because, like, the, the header for the website on Google is, this is my website now, which seems like... My, my internet IQ is telling me that you should never click on a website that has that as the title. There's no E in the name. It's Tim Gesser. Oh, there's no E after the Gesser. Ah! There you go. I gotta say, great aesthetics. Great Vlambert style aesthetics. <laughs> I'm all, this is why I'm always glad I start with the video off it's probably fine the first thing i see though is a picture of like a bunch of drunk high school students and the men have no shirt on i i gave chrono photo a pass even though the first shot that i saw in chrono photo was uh a dude getting his freaking head blown off or something and they've never brought anything back that's nearly as violent as that but i'm just gonna guess i know you can't see it i'm gonna guess that this is England? No, it's Australia. They're drinking Fosters. I'm going to guess this is Australia in 2012. Nope, it's England. Stonehenge, England, 2005. That's, and there's only one guess? That's it? I thought there were five. Okay, well, that was not like the best time guesser of all time. My, my apologies. <laughs> There's five rounds? Am I crazy? Okay, it was England 2005. I've made my guess. You got it spot on. Scroll, scroll down. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, this is a little easier. This is... Um, November 2020 and it looks like this is in New Zealand <laughs> based on this ba also based on this man wearing a t-shirt I think this is New Zealand 2020 you, are, you got it spot on, 2020. Your guess was 492 kilometers away. It was in Auckland. Worst guess of all time. What are you talking about? You thought it was Michigan? Why would... Have <laughs> you ever watched the news? You know, they have the news about things that happen in other parts of the world. 
The thing on the TV doesn't determine the room that you're in. You can zoom in too. If you say so. If you say so. Okay, so this is um, Iwo Jima, which is... <laughs> sorry, it's somewhere... <laughs> You can't escape the South Pacific, man. It's got to be... I don't know, man. I'm just being honest with you. I don't know where it is. I don't think it's in Japan, right? It's like an island off the coast of Japan. I guess it, they probably would have approached more... No, they went through the South Pacific. Okay. And th this was like 1944. It was 1945, and it was this island. Oh, I'm not mad about that. That's not too bad. What the hell is this? Is that David Blaine? Is that Zachary Levi from Chuck? What is this? <laughs> That's so true. Many people are saying that I've been in the back rooms. Yes, I've seen them. The back rooms, the front rooms, they're very nice. This to me, this seems like... <laughs> I have no clue, man. This seems like pre... I'm losing if people are saying this is a wax museum. What are you talking about? Dude, that is not... Or is this guy... This guy's not wax. Look at his fucking eyes, man. His head's gonna explode. <laughs> and then... This is not wax. That is a... That is a man. That's real him. Oh, sorry. You can't see... Maybe I could... Look at his eyes, dude! This man is dying. What is he doing? I'm just going to say this is New York City. The most relentless bastard in New York City. I'm going to say this is, you know, right the it should be at the Museum of Modern Art. And uh, I think this is pre-presidency. I'm going to say this is during the campaign. Let's say this was 2016 pre-presidency. It was 2008. You were eight years off, but you were 1.7 kilometers from the correct location. That's, that's pretty good. I'll live with that. It is David Blaine. This is London. I've, I know because it says the London Pavilion, but also because I've seen um, Last Night in Soho. This shit is Soho right here. Now, where's Soho? I don't know. Oh, right there. Um, say that this is to me this looks like it might be color photo makes me think post World War II but it's obvious it's pre-1960s so put me at like 1955 it was 1949 alright fair enough And you were 400 meters away from the correct location. Oh, baby! Pretty good. Final score, 42,000 out of 50,000. That's a great game. I would, I would control D and add time, dull, time guesser to the, to the folder. Absolutely. You folks see the video of the lady saying here's how you make cold sparkling water and it's like a it's a minute long video and she's like L listen you to make delicious cold sparkling bubbly water out of tap water get ready Let's for go. this the first step is just to have some regular room temperature water on hand i personally mm -hmm. really like this filtered water but you can also just use water from the tap the second step is just to pour water 
from okay. this filtered water Pour into a jug. filtered water into a jug that lives in the fridge, okay? Pour filtered water Here's into a jug. Here's the jug, nice and cold, ready to become bubbly water. Okay, it's been chilled. It's about to become bubbly water. The next step is just to fill the soda stream bottle with... The next step is you put the water in a, in a, in a soda stream bottle. Cold water. Then make it bubbly. And then the final step is use the soda stream <laughs> to make it bubbly. <laughs> Life hack. Oh, man. Water talk is insane. There's videos of people putting half bottles of sugar-free syrup into their water. What? First off, water talk? Wait, that was the lady who said they should hang five fentanyl dealers in San Francisco? I saw that tweet. I didn't put two and two together. Holy cow. This, uh, this TikTok is driving me crazy, man. It's like, it's 60 seconds long. I was like, what's she going to do? First, you get some filtered water. Okay. And she goes over it like so genuinely too. She's like, I have this like cone filter here, um, but you can use any filter you want. I'm like, oh shit, this is like crazy. Then she's like, okay, you pour the filtered water into this jug of water that lives in the fridge. And I was like, lives in the fridge is how like my two and a half year old describes the position of an object, but sure. Okay, I'm with you. So everyone, everyone takes shortcuts when they're making speech like live and improvisationally. Then so you poured water into water, you chill it in the fridge. What's the next? I thought there was gonna be like a chemical reaction. Then you pour it into the soda stream bottle. Then you put the soda stream bottle in the soda stream. And you hit the CO2 to put CO2 into the water so it gets bubbly. What the hell? Duh. Is it an ad? No. Like, it's just, it's just insane. It's just crazy. It's like someone describing, you know, like, hey, I've got like a life tip for how to make a sandwich you're not going to believe this and then like the first six steps are like nothing and then the seventh step is you put stuff in between two slices of bread you watched it though yeah to to mock it if you want to join the club send me some of your <laughs> i was gonna say send me your high school yearbook photo <laughs> owned 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 oh man that's not a dig. Everyone's embarrassed of their yearbook photo. You probably got some like insane quote in there. Reach for the stars. Even if you miss, you'll still land on the moon. Lol. Quote attribution. My best friend who I never talked to again after June of the year that I graduated high school. You know what? It, it drives me crazy or it drove me crazy in high school. Why do all the people on the yearbook committee act like they're like the coolest people in the school? It took you a year to make a photo album and everybody was literally in the same building 10 hours a day for 10 months. You shouldn't be bragging about anything. That should be like a two week project at most. It took you almost 10 months to gather like a photo of everybody who's in the same place every single day. And then, what, send out little pieces of paper? Hey, vote for who has the coolest hair. Oh my god. Hey, NL, you're forgetting about how long it took us to tally. We got 18 votes for Dennis having the coolest hair. And then we got 15 votes for Justin having the coolest hair. Come here, kid. It's the same fucking haircut. It's the ramen, the curly ramen on top, the shaved sides and back. It's, this, it's the same haircut, okay? Collages take longer? What the hell are you talking about? I've told this story before, um, but I do remember when we had the superlative voting passed out in, in high school, one of the categories was moodiest. And uh, I voted for a friend of mine, sincerely. And then I asked everybody else at the lunch table. She wasn't there. I was like, who'd you guys vote for for moodiest? And they all said her name. And I was like, yeah. And then I was waiting for it to be, like, we were good friends. I was waiting for it to be in the yearbook because I was like, she's going to have a horrible day. 
and then they did not print it. And I think that was a great idea. So big ups to the yearbook committee for that one. I think they, they, they did a nice thing that day, not just for me, but for, for, I mean, this shouldn't be something you should have to begin with, you know? Shouldn't have like an, in, an insult in the yearbook. You could have like good natured ribbing, but wasn't there also one that was best ass? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I know Malf uh, dredged, if you'll allow me, dredged the yearbook out like a couple years ago. I don't remember if, if best ass was a category. That doesn't sound right, but it was the mid-2000s. It was in Dan's best rear view. <laughs> I got most unique. Let me guess, you listen to My Chemical Romance? It's not a, an insult. It's just, a, I mean, like, I'm just saying. I don't think I won any superlatives in high school. I, people don't believe me. They think I'm, like, covering for my high school career. My high school career, I was, like, a noble gas, dude. I didn't give any electrons. I didn't take any electrons. I went to class. Uh, I never had an atomic wedgie. Never had my pants pulled down. Never gave someone an atomic wedgie. I had friends I ate lunch with. We ate lunch. We went home. Did our homework, played some video games, came back the next day, rinse and repeat for four years. Don't start nothing, won't be nothing. I didn't, uh, I, I was in like one club. I was in the trivia club because I was a damn trivia stud. And then I also did a little bit of fundraising to make sure that I could get my volunteer hours for my diploma. That's it, basically. Favorite underrated Steely Dan song? I don't know, man. It's been like... It's driving me crazy here. It's not a negative question by any stretch. We've been talking about Steely Dan for like three years. We gotta, we gotta internalize the fact that we can move past these bits like faster than that. Like I had the audacity to get a cold this weekend. People in my Discord were very supportive. Except one person said, like, they, they were just making a joke, but at the same time, you know, put yourself in my shoes for a second. They said, like, I don't like to see NL get sick, but there's a part of me that thinks it's, like, retribution for the food poisoning isn't real take. And I'm like, oh, really? There's a part of it that's retribution for me making a joke that made you laugh nine years ago? That then you took too fucking seriously has been stuck in your brain for a decade? That I, now I got like some kind of respiratory, mild respiratory illness and you're like, it's what you deserve? You need to experience parts of culture that are not just streams. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... <laughs> you're taking it fucking too serious, man. It's too much. Yeah, that's what they're, they're treating me like Germa, which it, it has its pluses and its minuses. I think I get more credit than I deserve, like the one time per stream when I make people laugh. But people are also like, you know, everything's like an arc. Every sentence you say, people are like, ooh, here's the arc. It's not an arc, I'm just a guy. I'm just saying words, There's not that, it's not that serious. Hey, hey, let me, another ghost shark, please. My name's Noah, I get where's the arc all the time. Yeah, but my name's not Noah, so like, I'm just saying like, you kind of deserve it. <laughs> He's in his making fun of Chatter's arc. He's in his psycho arc. You should just embrace being the arc streamer. I can do that, but you gotta meet me halfway and embrace shutting the hell up. Occasionally. Not specifically right now. But like on occasion. <laughs> Plus two. <laughs> just an insult. How did it take this long to learn progression trees? Bro, I've been raising a fucking family. Not playing Path of Exile for 10 years so I can, you know, have my brain develop structures that are, like, completely worthless to me in my actual life. I've been, like, driving my damn car to the store and stuff like that. Picking my kid up from daycare. Cooking frozen waffles and trying to figure out exactly the right amount of a pressure to put on a toddler to make them use the potty but not get scared of the potty. It's not like, oh, you don't even know you need to get, like... Voltimeters before you get lightning damage? Like, is this your first time? Yes! It's my first time! There's your, there's your non-smarmy answer, because I haven't fucking done this shit in, like, 15 years. <laughs> Thoughts on the Dalai Lama? 
I did pop in the Discord this weekend. I believe I typed, um, please tell me that the Dalai Lama thing is AI generated, to which they said it's not, and I went, oh, no, no, no. What Dalai Lama thing? Video surfaced of the Dalai Lama asking a little boy to suck on his tongue. <laughs> It's so bad that it's like, it's actually like made up by Judd Apatow or something like that. Like, it's so insane. It's funny? Well, yeah, it's funny in the sense that it's like, I mean, did you have that on your 2023 bingo card? Dalai Lama asked small child to suck on his tongue? Like, that wasn't so, you did? Well, if you had it on your bingo card, Bro, tell me what the S&P 500 is going to do in the next six months. That's my free space. <laughs> Hello, Apollo. Hello. Apollo, this is not... It's genuinely... I swear to you, this isn't about you. But you just um, reminded me... You being here reminded me of this. We need to stop posting our opinions on the Mario movie. It's just, it's, it's just too much. I get it, you saw it. The critics are stupid. Your kids loved it. You loved it. You cried. You didn't cry. You hate Seth Rogen. You have no respect for Fred Armisen. I haven't even seen the fucking movie, man. But I've seen the movie. You know, you just gotta fucking really... Shut the fuck up. We're at it. We gotta shut the fuck up about succession, too. Can we shut the fuck up about succession while we're at it? It's too much, man. It's good. Watch it. I'm never gonna watch it. There's nothing to do with the fact that it's getting a lot of positive press right now. I'm just like Matthew Broderick and the cable guy right now. I don't have room in my life for another friend right now. Okay, Steven. <laughs> Why didn't you just say so? It's worth watching. It's all worth watching, man. I'm not... Keep succession out of your mouth. That's what I'm saying to you. I'm saying keep succession out of your mouth. Wait, does succession have 22 minute long episodes? If so, I want to apologize. No. All right, never mind then. My respect is taken. 45 minutes? Slightly respect my time, at least. Have you watched Crown of Candy? Paula, what the hell is Crown of Candy? Everyone's laughing at me. I'm not in on the joke, so I'm offended. What the hell is Crown of Candy? I know Kong of Candy. Or as I call her, Candy Kong. My blushing bride. My lover be my lover, yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a, okay, I'm not even going to go there. I don't, you, uh, you got to pick your battles. I'll make fun of a lot of things, but I'm not going to be the guy who's on Twitch making fun of watching Dungeons and Dragons streams because they've got a damn... Like, Bob's building an army. I don't want to mess with that. Go, Shark! I mean, like, again, I'm not saying I'm, like, more important than anybody else. I'm just saying I, I had other stuff going on this weekend. But, like, my hierarchy of media is, like, movies are at the most important. TV is, like, second most important. Then it's probably, like, music. But you can kind of do music laterally while doing other stuff more easily than the other two. And then like books and then like streams. And like we're getting way down there. Video games. I played some sap while I was doing potty training, but like that's about it. I just don't have the time, man. But like I'll tell you. Streams that think they're TV shows is like way down on the fucking. That's like. I'll get back to that stuff when I'm retired. Retired when? I would say I was about one more, um... 
I guess he's not showing up today feels bad, man, in chat before when I was like three seconds away from going live. I have to fight this impulse about once every six months, but I was like, maybe I'll just retire. Maybe I'll go live like a little baby and be like, hey guys, I'm retiring, see you never. Boop. And then just like sit in chat and watch all the no's flood in and then be like, just kidding, lol. <laughs> Like Ralphie in A Christmas Story, when he, he dreams about showing up to Family Christmas blind, and they're like, Ralphie, why did you, tell us, tell us what, what took your eyes, Ralphie. It was soap poisoning. No! Hello, Squeaks. Squeaks, why, every, every time I sign into Twitter, I'm served with a video from somebody I don't follow that says, uh, this is my submission for OTK something. Try squeaksing your shit to this. I don't even know, I don't know what I did to deserve this on a cosmic sense. I also don't know what it really means. I think I can read between the lines, but. <laughs> what did you do to get that act of self-love named after yourself? Or is it like somebody said it once and then you said, um, don't do that? And then they said, oh, he loves it. Do it again. I am... <laughs> I don't hate Dredge. It was the first thing I played except for the dolls when I came back today. I am getting a little annoyed. I liked it more when it was just like, you fish, you get some money, you upgrade your ship. You got like a little quest. Nowadays, it's fucking everyone is building on the one that came before. You got to use dynamite to open the shortcuts. You got to use... Uh, Banish to get rid of the the big anglerfish when it starts going crazy on you. You gotta like it's just It's not what I was originally Anticipate we might as well blow it up. Just open it up. So we get better with the with the future Big fish only attack you when the small fish are you, that, that's what I'm saying though I'm not saying it makes it a bad game. It's just like as the game goes on ah! I wish it um well, let me, excuse me, you, you should be banished? As the game went on, like, it's no Dave the Diver. Like, it's not like every time you go back to base, it's like, here's 25 new mechanics. But I, I kind of wish it, it stayed simpler longer. And as always, like, I just wish every game on the planet was, like, about 70% of the length of what it would normally, what they built it as. Exactly, that's all I'm saying is like you could... It's like in baking, it's not a perfect metaphor. Because, you know, you can make a metaphor that seems apt for anything, or an analogy that seems apt for anything without it actually being valid. But I do, I think the baking analogy is, is pretty spot on. You know, the best bread is not the bread that was needed the longest. It's the bread that was needed exactly as much as it needed to be needed, and then they said, pop that shit in the oven and take it out in, you know, 19 minutes. What's the correct game length? You guys are too stem pilled. Now, I hold a degree in science, so I'm qualified to say that without you getting offended. There's no quadratic equation for, you know, value. You want to, I think you want to be on an ascending scale of fun. And then as soon as the denouement hits and you're like, I'm getting a little tired of this, we cut it. You have to cut it after it starts to trough a little bit. Because if you cut it while it's still going up, people would be like, that shit wasn't long enough. I give it a 5 out of 10. It's too short. I was still having fun. If you had a lot of fun and then you were like, I'm a little sick of this. And then you have the final boss. People are like, that's perfect. We didn't even get any fish. We got this. Okay. So it's like the dollar per hour scale? Where are you, like 13 years old? I only get $50 a month for an allowance and a game is $60. A month is 30 times 30 days times 24 hours. I need to get at least, you know, 720 hours out of this game in order to justify my existence. It's crazy, man. Yeah, like, I loved Elden Ring. Elden Ring was too long, though. That shit should have been 17 hours long. And I think there's like a great... 
four to five hour game inside God of War. He loves his son, he loses his son, he fights a giant to establish some of the story beats, you skip the 17 extra giants that are exactly the same that he has to fight, he fights Loki, he loses, he fights Thor, he wins, he comes back, he fights Loki, they both lose, and then, you know, you get that emotional payoff at the end, and you still, you, you don't, you can still get seven hours of sleep before you gotta get up from, for work the next day. I enjoy long games with a lot to do. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, like, some people only eat chicken tenders, and some people eat, like, a, a varied diet. You know, there's, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy God of War. It's your time. It's just, it's, it's the streamer curse. It's like, anytime you have an opinion, people are like, bad opinion. What do you mean, bad opinion? <laughs> it's not, I'm not, I'm not hitting you with some um, Terrence Howard mathematics. I'm not saying 2 plus 2 equals 5. I'm just saying I'd prefer games to be shorter. People are like, nah, you wouldn't. And then the whole point of this is like, we'll, we'll have this conversation. People will be like, bad take, bad take. Then I'll be like, okay, what do you give Dredge? They're like, uh, I liked it. It was like a 7 out of 10. And I'm like, yeah, I like it. It's like a 7 out of 10. Why are we wasting our damn time arguing then? It's a 7 out of 10, but only you can have criticism that bulks up that, uh, makes up the bulk of that 30% gap? I'm not allowed to have a, a, any criticism about it at all? Not every when we do a tier list, that's like when arguing makes sense. Like it's designed to be engagement bait. Is way more than a seven. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm gonna go retire. See you never. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What place in the tourney do you think you're gonna get? <laughs> Thanks for the raid, Daniel. Hello, hello. Um, honestly, I'm not joking. I think we can win round one. This is very condescending, but I think we can win one round. Any, like, four, quote unquote, for fun esports tournament I've ever participated in, there's always been, like, one team that just like hyper optimizes it we got no shot at winning i've come to terms with it if it happens and we win that's great there i mean this is the condescending part i'm not saying that they have more time than we do dan i'm just saying that they have less responsibilities <laughs> I don't even know, I don't know anything about our opponents, so I can't say that. But streamers broadly, it's not that they aren't as busy. It's just, I would say they have less, on average, less inflexible responsibilities. Like when you're a parent, it's one of those things you, you can't just be like, oh, I'm going to stream for 16 hours today, but don't worry, I'll be a dad for like 16 hours tomorrow. Like you can't, you can't carbo load fatherhood. You know, you gotta, that shit needs to be dripped out, like, as needed. What's great is that, like, a, well, I don't know what's, how Sips does it, honestly. <laughs> it's, Sips is living a different lifestyle in Europe. Maybe, maybe it, it, it is different when you have, like, what does Sips have now, like, four kids? Maybe if you got four kids, you're just like, ah, uh, you know, the oldest one can look after the youngest one now. And you, you become like an individual again to some extent. I, 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 I don't feel like that's how it works, but maybe I'm mistaken. It's different if you live on an island. Oh, wait. Is this my opportunity to... Um, do you think Vancouver's on an island? There's no shame in thinking Vancouver's on an island. There is a big island called Vancouver Island. But is, no, Vancouver's not on an island. It's next to Vancouver Island. He's talking about the UK? What do you, yeah, but what does the UK have to do with anything? He meant Sips? But Sips lives on an island. That's why they say it's different when you live on an island. Oh, wait. What's the oh, wait for? The dude lives on an island. And you don't. Yes. Okay. Correct. 
Oh wait is normally like, you would be like, hey, you're like me picking what to eat for dinner, okay? Knowing that Malf is a vegetarian. Hey, there's this great barbecue restaurant that just opened up. Oh wait. You know what I mean? Like the oh wait is like, I, there was information that I knew that meant that this obviously wasn't the way that it was gonna go. New restaurant. That's what he did with the island and sips. It's different if you live on an island. Oh wait, but he does live on an island. <laughs> I tr okay, now we got a, from the chatter. The chatter said I truly did think Vancouver was an island. Well, well, well. The streamer's right again. Oh, yeah, there's a great example. I can't wait to see what NL does for the hurdle today. Oh, wait. Long Island better than Vancouver. We already covered it. It's very simple. If I'm, I'm not holding a grudge. That being said, I hope that the Islanders don't make the playoffs. That's not holding a grudge. I had no strong... I, I mean, what was it like a week ago in Jay's chat... I said, I'm, I have to root for the Islanders in the East because they have Bo Horvat. Three days later, he says, um, I'm enjoying it here a lot better than Vancouver, and I'll tell you that for free. Okay, well, the Islanders just lost my allegiance. I hope you don't make the playoffs. I'm not actively rooting again. I'm not, I'm not saying I want everybody who's ever rooted for the Islanders to you know, go die or experience misery or whatever. I'm just saying you, you lost favor in the public relations, uh, in the court of public relations. And then maybe, I know he apologized already, maybe if you miss the playoffs after saying, oh, it's so great to be part of a playoff push, maybe you'll think before you speak next time. I can taste the salt. Bro, he like insulted your city and made you so mad and then like lost the game immediately after. You're so upset right now. He made an unforced error. He insulted the fans who supported him. Maybe the words came out of his mouth wrong, but like... They said, what's it like with, to have this kind of energy in the building? And he said, it's a lot better than Vancouver. Even if it's true, just keep your mouth shut, idiot. <laughs> you might be... <laughs> your ass might get traded back to us in four years or something like that. You just hurt your market value. You berate chatters all the time? I know, it feels amazing. Also, like, no disrespect, but, like, chatters kind of deserve it. Like, when I'm in the stands of an NHL game, like, every two seconds, I'm not going, like, Hey, Bo Horvat, what's your opinion on uh, Tacos Al Pastor? And he's like, I like them. They're, fuck you, Bo Horvat, minus two, minus two, minus two, fuck you, fuck you. And then he's like, oh, it's kind of annoying sometimes. <laughs> you know, I could, I could relate to that. <laughs> I'm in the audience, I'm mostly just keeping my mouth shut. Then they do like, everybody clap your hands, and I go... <laughs> and they score a goal, and I go, woo! And they almost score a goal, and I go, oh, you know? But then the other part is, you're allowed to hold a grudge against me, too. I'm not saying, like, you should not hold a grudge against me. You know, you're responsible for your own feelings. We do? I know. That's why I'm like, why do you keep showing up? I stopped watching the Islanders games. <laughs> Mostly because I just can't bear to see like another 2-1 win in overtime. Like, score some goals. Or at least let some in. Squeak's chat constantly shits on him and he takes it. NL's chat shits on him and he fights back. Exactly, it's choose your fighter, you know? If anything, I, res I respect the Squeak's chat approach. Because people in his chat are like, yes, we're bullies. In my chat, people bully a little bit. And then when I, like, uh, bully back, they're like, why would you bully me? We're here because we love your content. I spent five hours a day hate watching your stream. Just constantly typing in the same shit in all caps over and over to irritate you. Because when you're here, you're family. And I'm like... I say something that's obviously a joke, like when was the last time you ate a meal that wasn't mayonnaise spread on top of chicken tenders? And they're like, holy fuck, a little over the line. 
I know I suggested you don't care about your job because you were busy being a father this weekend, but how dare you suggest that I'm a picky eater? I actually eat my chicken tenders with barbecue sauce. I can't believe you would say something like that. Can you answer the question, please? I don't like mayonnaise! You should know that! You've been watching for so long! Ghost Shark is I-4. I-4?! That's J, but... No way. It's gotta be I... I-4? No shot. No, it's just somewhere in the open ocean. Okay. Take me out to the open ocean. I think I see your ass. Please. <laughs> There's one behind you as well. That's it? That doesn't look like a shark at all, bro. I thought that was like a little that was like a little eel or something. It was a decroted piece of crap. Okay, run. And don't don't show anybody the golden ticket, Charlie. You run straight home. Tina, eat the food, you fat lard. Go get some dinner. Honestly, I'm I'm sick of your ass. Just get banished. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Bro, no, fuck it. I'm making some milkshakes. Slash marker, that's dredge. See you never. What happened there? We spent um, 20 minutes finding uh, a ghost shark. We found it. Our boat touched a rock and the one piece of our hull that we lost was holding the ghost shark. As a result, the shark fell out of our ship. See, this is a fucking game. Every level gets better instead of worse. The more complexity they add, like the more fun it is, instead of the less fun it is. If you ever want to stop playing it, you can just stop playing it. People aren't like, oh, you didn't see the ending. There is no ending, bro. You get born, you got 18 years of childhood, you work at Papa's Freezeria. The game goes until you quit or you die. It's just like life. You just need any alternative volcanic fish, honestly. No. Sorry. That's it. You know what? It's not for me. Biome 1, here's your to-do list. Catch two fish. No problem. Here's the two fish. Biome 3, catch four fish. Hang on, my head's exploding. Okay, I got four fish. Biome 3, uh, catch nine fish to make bait to put in the trap to catch the thing. We'll shoot a cannon at it. Okay, I need a little bit of help. Well, we we kind of got it. Biome 4, Every three seconds, you're getting bit by anglerfish nonstop. Uh, you got to catch a five by five grid of, uh, of abyssal. If you like it, that's fine. I think I've reached my limit with dredge. By the way, it's crazy to me people keep calling this a children's game. Just because children like enjoy, by the way, don't even get me started. You motherfuckers will be like, I can't believe he's playing a children's game. Yeah, I can't believe you motherfuckers all went to the movie theater and made the Super Mario Brothers movie open to $350 million. You're taking seats away from little eight-year-old kids birthday parties and stuff like that. 
Then you're going to say, oh, wait, is it paused? Because we are getting a phone call here. Your ass is going to, I paid money to play a kid's game on my own time. I'm not taking anybody else's lunch in the interim period. Okay, put this, can I have a phone call, please, please? I'm just saying, you got to apply the same level of criticism to yourself that you apply to me. But I already know that there's no shot that that's happening. I, the only thing that makes this a kid's game is the aesthetics. If you made the art shittier and called it Fire Emblem Milkshake Heroes, people would be like, it's not a kid's game. It's a game for general audiences. But because it's like looks like a Flash game, people are like, it's for kids. You don't even see... You don't even know what you're talking about. Oh no. I was so... I was... So insulting when Chibli was playing this. And now I've got to beat the stupid allegations myself. I can figure this out. Your first move must be left. <laughs> just let me, uh, just let me think about it for a second. I think it's, I, I... I, this is the, we're back at the start. <laughs> I gotta get here. How, how's my ass gonna get there? It's not possible. Maybe it's very possible. Maybe it's the most possible thing that's ever happened. Oh! Oh, three-tone polo, three-tone polo. Can't be done. So that's it. It, it, it simply can't be done. Can't be done. There's no way to do it. Can't be done. <laughs> that might have ruined. Oh, maybe it didn't ruin it. Maybe it did. Maybe that was the right. It's the right path. They won't let me go that way. Okay. No, I'm. I think I'm screwed. Just send me down. I was just bashing into things. There you go. This makes perfect sense. Oh no! I got my. <laughs> Why do you call it a Hollywood? A Hollywood, I believe, is a slang term for an enormous line of cocaine. Which is why, anytime I use whipped cream, it just evokes the image. I thought it was a joke about semen. Yeah, because you guys think everything is a joke about semen. Like, if you don't get a joke, it's always assumed to be like some double entendre about coming. If I ever make a joke like this about something sexual, you'll know it. You'll know it immediately, because all of chat will say, why is he so horny today? Ice cream, cherry ice cream. That's gotta be 99, at worst, 99. 97 on the toppings? She is a hater. It's, it's the Subway meme. You don't like the sandwich? Lady, you made the sandwich. I know it's disgusting. You're the one who picked all the shit. By the way, many people this weekend linked me to the Subway Sandwich Shop um, Cadbury Cream Egg Sandwich and said, how do you feel about this? It may surprise you. I'm for it. I would never order it myself. I'm for it because I think it's one way that Subway could possibly survive is just by recognizing that they're trash. 
go like the Taco Bell route and instead of being like, oh, we're kind of like healthy as long as you never read the nutritional information, just start serving like the most insane stoner food you could ever imagine. And then people, they're not going to respect Subway, but at the very least, if they're like intoxicated, they might be like, hell yeah, bro, go get a candy sandwich. Go get a foot-long candy sandwich. <laughs> It might be a way that they could stick around. My ass getting the damn soup. What's going in the subway? Hey, what's the soup of the day? Oh, it's Jolly Rancher. Oh, that sounds good. I'll take a large. This goes here. You come in. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready, Okalani. You want a banana butter? Relax. You're going to get your, your adult uh, smoothie, okay? Excuse me, I need my coffee. Yeah, can I get three Reese's peanut butter uh, swirls in it? I need my coffee before work. Shit makes me sick, man. What kind of bread is used on the Cadbury sandwich? It's Subway. So the answer is, that the, the first answer is whatever bread you want. The second answer is Italian herbs and cheese, because it's the best. I mean, if Subway really wanted to cut down on like their own expenses, make their business better, they should just start serving Italian herbs and cheese. That's all they, they, they don't need to, especially like, come on, oats and honey. Who out there, and I'm sure some of you are in chat right now, so I apologize. Who out there is going oats and honey over Italian herbs and cheese? I can at the very least see that you might go wheat if you're, I, obviously you're not having a healthy meal, but maybe you're trying to make it as healthy as possible once you're already locked in. I could see a plain, maybe, if you're a picky eater, but come on. Having the choice? Wow! Crab tea! Crab tea! You have the choice between Italian herbs and cheese and oats and honey, and you choose the oats and honey? Check yourself. That's all I'm saying. UK also does a non sandwich. Hmm. That sounds good. Hey, can I get the, the ham sandwich on naan? <laughs> yes, cheese and toasted, please. <laughs> can I have a meat, <laughs> meatball sandwich? <laughs> oh, you made my voice change. You got a meatball sandwich. Oh, what kind of bread would you like that on? I'll take that on naan, please. It's the, the Mitch Hedberg joke. What kind of bread? A uh, banana. Oh, man. I don't understand the issue. I don't know, like a deli sandwich with naan bread? It just seems like something you make in your house when you're, like, you have leftovers from two different meals. They don't go to, they might taste good, it's just weird. Which is fine. I do, I, I wish Malf would get well soon, okay? I'm gonna extend to him a courtesy he didn't extend to me. Yesterday on Discord, he sent me a message. He said, are we gaming today? I said, I can't brother, I'm sick. He said, lol, stop eating poop. Not gonna say that when I finished my Peloton ride today, looked at my phone, first tweet I saw, Malf one hour ago, sorry guys, we're not gonna be live today, I got a sore throat. I'm not gonna say that he, he Bo Horvatted himself a little bit, is he invited some comedic timing into his life? I'm just saying, that's why you gotta respect comedic timing. I'm not your dad. I knew your dad. By the way, can I tell you? Sorry, pause. <laughs> we went through the McDonald's drive-thru yesterday. Whole family was not feeling like 100% well. We needed some food that the, um, that the baby could eat as well. She loves a Happy Meal, okay? Let me tell you something. Say I'll have a 10-piece number 10. You know what they said? Habanero for dipping sauce? Hab Habanero for dipping sauce? I didn't even know that was an available sauce. The first off, you come out of the pocket with, with a ridiculous question like that. I said, no. One sweet and sour, one hot mustard, please. She said, lemonade to drink? Am I at the right restaurant here? Am I at uh, Le Cordon Bleu Culinary College? I thought I was at McDonald's. Lemonade to drink? I said, no. I'll take a Coke Zero with waffle fries. 
It was crazy. It's, why, are you, why are you trying to guess what I want? It's not like you drive for free. It's not like you drive up to the drive-thru and they're like, welcome to McDonald's. Big Mac combo? You wait for them to order. Why are we wasting all this time where you're trying to guess what I'm going to order? Let me just tell you. They need to get rid of those sauces. But maybe if they gave people the sauces they ordered, they wouldn't have an overstock problem. I'm always like one sweet and sour, one hot mustard. Open up my bag, I got, you know, a barbecue. Anyway, sorry, what were we doing here? This is our banana butter. Just use the app? No. I will not just use the app. I'm sick of all these, every single company wants me to use an app. Bro, my phone is like, I got, I got everything on this. I don't want to be, McDonald's? You're not a big enough uh, part of my life for me to give you a, a place in the damn kingdom. I do my banking on this thing. You want, you want me to have a, an app for every single restaurant I've ever been to in my entire life? Just take my order at the restaurant like it's 1995. Who you got tonight? Timberwolves or Lakers? I've been, as you know, I'm a lifelong NBA fan. I gotta say, I, I think the Lakers take it just because the Timberwolves. I mean, Rudy Gobert, somebody's got to teach him a lesson, man. You can't be popping off like that. You can't be, you know, breaking your hand or getting suspended or whatever. I mean, somebody threw a punch or something like that. I don't really know how it goes, but... He's suspended? It's good, honestly. It's, it, it, it's about time. He's got to clean up his damn act. He punched Kyle Anderson? Who's Kyle Anderson? Is he like the, the towel boy for the team? The Andersons get tickets to the games? Mr. Anderson, I am going to punch you. <laughs> is, that what, is that what Rudy Gobert said? <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> a little phlegmy, a little phlegmy. I coughed in your, uh, in your freezeria. Mr. Anderson, I'm not your agent. I knew your agent. I'm from the Matrix. Go inside. You'll find a person. Ask her her name. It's Trinity. Now I gotta remember what the fuck you ordered. <laughs> No, I gotta. Okay, no, no, I know what I'm. I know what I'm doing. Okay. You got. It was probably rocket sauce. And cherry bomb. This doesn't look right. Some rocket juice. She got the tropical tree. No, no, it's something like. Uh, you know what, let's just hit all the bases. Do you see the way she looked at this when it came out? <laughs> no, man. I haven't even started making this guy's yet. Ooh, still tipped. That's how you know the game actually takes place in America. Because if you, um... If you got bad service and you don't tip, they'll take a photo of your receipt, post it on Twitter, your ass will be dead by like 2 p.m. the next day. Okay, let me get a medium here. We can still recover a little bit. We can't do the tipping discourse again. My ass ordered food at a restaurant, got served the wrong food, gave a bad tip, and all of a sudden, A, I'm the asshole, and B, I'm responsible for the fact that some Douchebag in Wyoming doesn't pay his employees well. My ad, that, that's, that I'm getting canceled for ordering a bacon cheeseburger and getting served a quinoa salad, and then I'm responsible for wealth inequality? I didn't do anything. John Wick 5's plot is someone didn't tip at a restaurant. John Wick's dog starts working at a restaurant. Yeah, everything was pretty good today, ruff, ruff, but um, unfortunately... Just this one asshole didn't tip. He pulls up to the McDonald's drive-thru. 
Buongiorno, Mr. Wick. Habanero sauce? He's like, no, the usual. Ah, lemonade, sir. I get it. I'm with you. You call it back, you remix it a little bit. Everybody says plus two. Meanwhile, my ass is just here making milkshakes. Unable to keep three data points in my head simultaneously. <laughs> Sorry, I'm spiraling between bits. Somebody's saying, what if John Wick ordered the usual, the Aki way? I'm just picturing someone throwing down like a, a like shoulder stock P90 onto the grill. Then you throw the P90 onto the grill. What am I doing? All right, I'm, I'm making milkshakes. That's right. I hate where he goes chili works, man. I can beat the allegations on this one. I'm beating the allegations. Oh, <laughs> he did it. He did it. What the fuck? No, this one's not gonna happen, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> this looks right. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. That's not right. That's right. Gravity? <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> you can spin the caps? Oh! I thought I had to get it to like wirelessly transfer. <laughs> Wi-Fi chili. <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me. Did you see this thing with the Bud Light and uh... And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to get in trouble. Someone earlier, they said, NL, what's your boba order? My boba order is a um, mango peach fruit tea. If they give you the option green tea or black tea, we go green tea. And then add pearls, please. Otherwise, everything standard, standard sugar, standard ice, etc., etc. Wow, how do you know your order so well? Because it's what my wife orders. I don't drink boba. I drink soup. That doesn't answer the question. Okay, here's the question. I don't have a boba order. What the hell is a boba? You gotta know what a crumpet is to know what cricket is. That's fantastic. Cherry bomb. He is beating the blind allegations. Wildberry derps on top of that, please. Hey, we just added a new topping. Wildberry derps. <laughs> Shit is pure thorium. <laughs> Did you see the, the Linus Tech Tips thing? Where someone that like shot the video was like, am I going to be okay? And then the comment was like, hey, be careful with that anti-static bracelet. Those are mostly made of thorium oxide. It's not really a big deal, but if, if any dust ever comes off of it and you inhale it and it gets embedded in your lungs, it will leach ambient um, radiation into, into your body for the rest of your life. Did your daughter give you the inspiration to play this game? It's so wild to me how many people look down on, like, a supposed children's game. Bro, they're all children's games. Like, when your ass is holding down right trigger and, like, screaming epithets at people in Call of Duty, who do you think you're playing against? You're playing against 14s and, like, 35-year-old dudes who <laughs> wish they were 15. <laughs> There's like two adult games. There's like Sudoku and, and I know you're going to say chess, but it's actually crossword puzzles. Chess is a young person's game. Yo, the jacket kind of goes crazy though.
I gotta change my shirt. Sheesh! Okay, let me let me look at these pants real quick. <laughs> they, they, it just looks way too much like a diaper, man. It's just... It's kind of sick with it, though. Oh, new sticker unlocked. With the bucket hat and everything. Like Shaggy said, it wasn't me. Ha, ha, ha. How many tours you do a day, man? 25. Aha! Ha, ha. This dude is ordering a large drip coffee. Little Eduardo. Honestly, if you're this old, I'm not going to make fun of your order. You've done your time. I don't know what you've been through in your life. I don't know what anybody's been through in their life. But if you're like 22, you might have been through some stuff you might have not. This guy's definitely been through some shit. He can have his fucking 7 a.m. red velvet strawberry 3,000 calorie artery burster if he wants. If this is how, if this is his chosen vice, by all means. <laughs> now, Okalani, you better stay within the lines, okay? And what do you want on it, man? Anything for you. Pink Hollywood? I bet he's got some stories to tell. Little dookie dust, why not? You know, my doctor says I shouldn't have any more dookie dust. I know. They do be saying stuff like that. And a single cherry. Trying to watch my figure. That's a 100 right there. 98?! Fuck you, little Eduardo! You fucking dickhead! I thought we were kindred spirits! Are we far enough from the Harambe situation to admit the zoo handled it poorly? They should have let the kid bite it? There's six billion people, but not that many endangered gorillas. Seems like a fair trade. And a good lesson in accountability for bad parents. Oh, so now letting your kid fall in the gorilla pen at the zoo makes you a bad parent? It must be nice to have never made a mistake in your life. Here's the thing, the zoo's not in the animal business. The zoo is in the... They're in the entertainment business. I think people are going to be less likely to go to the zoo if they know that, like, if I fall into the gorilla pen, I'm not coming out. <laughs> the gorilla's coming out. <laughs> you know, you're, you, you're paying for the presumption of security to some extent. Like, my ass would just simply not go into the gorilla pen, but I guess I'm smarter than the average zoo attendee. It does suck for Harambe, though. I mean, like, dude literally was just in the zoo. And then somebody else makes a mistake, and he gets killed? I mean, he didn't do anything wrong, right? Wait, was he holding the kid? I don't know. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I hope, at the very least, I hope Haram Harambe is, like, haunting that kid's parents. Like, every night when they go to sleep, they get, they get visited by the ghost of gorillas past. He's rattling his damn chains and stuff. Jacob Marley style. Tiramisu. Don't mind if I do. You imagine get it like we hand make our tiramisu here. Every morning. Mama Maria comes in at 3.15 a.m. She carefully layers the the lady fingers and the mascarpone cheese. We bake it until it comes out just right, and then we throw that shit into a fucking blender with Nerds rope and jelly beans and just <laughs> By the way, I got to pause. Did you see the tweet of the and I didn't know that this existed the guy who was watching Dungeons and Dragons in um, D box or sorry not D box. He was watching it in screen X Which is a movie theater format that I only became recently familiar with where there's one screen and then two more screens that give you like a 270 degree field of view, but it's not like IMAX, it's just like the movie spread across three screens. Um, but then <clears throat> he said that he watched it in Screen X and like the format itself made no sense. 
but then also halfway through the movie, the two screens on the side restarted and started playing the movie over from the beginning. <laughs> so the second, the middle screen was playing the movie from the start, or like as it had gone to that point, and then the side screens were playing something completely different. <laughs> It's so good. And then I saw, I was like, I didn't even know Screen X existed. I looked it up. There's one at the downtown Vancouver theater. I got to go see Tony Collette and Monica Bellucci and Mafia Mama and Screen X, man. They should put Subway Surfer on the side. Now you're talking. Act three, act three. Blur had song two. We have act three. When, when the chip bleed down, 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 and then it's act three. Down, 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 down. It was an easy thing, but not the a oh, woohoo. Can you comment on my 24 hour stream? I was, I was, I enjoyed watching what I could of it, and I was, I was proud of you for doing it. I will say, and listen, I had accused of being toxic. This is not toxic. I'm the only person who will tell you the truth. You guys gotta stop playing Mahjong on stream. It's a selfish act. You played some stuff for the fans, don't get me wrong. But you gotta... The Mahjong is an act of self-love. Like, the occasional act of self-love, I get it. I mean, I played way too much Blood Bowl 3 on stream. But the Mahjong, it's just... Never know what's going on. <laughs> All content's not for you? Yeah, but Mahjong is like just for them. And that's too far. And Origin. It's for Origin too. Your wife plays Mahjong on stream? I know. She's doing it for her. She's my wife. I support her. When Chibli does it though, I'm like, this guy could be playing Papa's Freezeria right now. I mean, I'm basically being a hater. You can play whatever you want. The best thing to play is something you want that the audience also wants. I know there's people in your chat that are like, I want Mahjong. Don't trust them. That's like the people that are like, oh, I feel so good after I eat a salad. Then you like put a hidden camera on them and they drive to Burger King like three seconds after that. They just, they, they don't know what they want. You got to give them what they don't know they want. You know what, you think I asked people before I started playing Papa's Freezeria? They would have said, no, that's a children's game I played when I was a kid. No, don't do it, you're gonna lose so many viewers. Instead, we've reinvented the Twitch meta. This is now the largest category on the website. I said an alarm. 34%?! Number three has been waiting for so long. <laughs> Whatever, they're ones and zeros. You don't like it, you walk the fuck out. You haven't paid me yet. Why take the wrong order? Why don't they just say this is the wrong order and give it back? Bro, because they're Gen Z, okay? Then they'd have to talk to another human being instead of to chat GPT. Gen Z be like, oh, I don't want to commute 90 minutes to work in traffic. That necessitates me purchasing a car. Can't I just do my job on the computer from my computer at home? No, idiot. Then there's no sense of shared trauma that causes us to be bonded to one another, even though only the circumstances of requiring selling our labor for wages brought us together in the first place. Which U.S. state would make for the worst baby name? I'm gonna say New York. I'm gonna. I, I I went through them all. I'm gonna say New York is the worst. Almost all of the other states are like not great names, I would say. But be, introducing yourself and being like, "Hi, my name is like New York Simmons or something like that," you'd be like, "Come on, your name is New York, New Hampshire." 
Yeah, but like New Hampshire is not that famous of a state. If anything, people would be like, oh, New Hampshire, that's interesting. New York, they'd be like, buddy, what's your problem? Hope you didn't have anything going on today, Utah. New York is a city, not a state. <laughs> you almost, you almost got me. Blender ball, Chibli, let me show you how it's done, okay? I'm fucked. <laughs> okay, that might that might do it. Oh! The perfect. That's it's too much power, dude. Bonk it. Fuck. <laughs> Hang on, it's the Portolini feast? It's the goddamn Catalina wine mixer? She came in with a damn spoon too. Can I tell you by the way? The the older I get, or maybe it's it's maybe not the older I get, maybe it's like the more family first I get. The more I idealize the idea of living in a small town, like Papa's Freezeria, where you demarcate parts of the year based on little festivals and stuff. Oh, it's the Tulip Festival. After the Tulip Festival, Canada Day. After Canada Day, you wait a few weeks, it's the fucking Oyster Bake. Oyster Bake's done, don't worry, we got the damn crab boil in the second week of August. That is, you know what? I want to live in Stardew Valley, but in real life. You're absolutely right. Like, this weekend was Easter. I don't give a shit about Easter. But I was like, honey, it's Easter! She was like, happy Easter, daddy. I was like, happy Easter, honey. Then she was like, happy Easter, Ruka. And I was like, meow, happy Easter. I was, I was having a great time. And I'm like, what's next? I don't even know what, what's coming up next. I guess Bo is Afraid is coming out, you know, in New York and Los Angeles this week. And then, like, in the rest of the world, like, a week later. Happy Bo is Afraid week, honey. She just doesn't have the same fucking... Son of a bitch! <laughs> Mother's Day? Oh, right. I want a medium tiramisu banana fuck festival. With rainbow sprinkles, Ziggy Stardust, and two cookies, but make them Italian. Okay, you're very cultured. Yeah, I know, you did a semester abroad. Congratulations. You saw fucking Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, in Italy. It must have been a real eye-opener, culturally speaking. You know what? Let me get a medium... Blueberry... Pink lemonade. Call this the tropical treat, the way it'd be the exact recipe of a tropical treat. Yeah, I know, you want a tropical treat. Oh, fuck you, dude. You want a large s'more ice cream, whipped cream, nutty buddy? Three different kinds of toppings? Makes me sick. Someone's gonna want a tropical treat. <laughs> I'm insulting all of my customers. You want Italian cookie? Italian cookie, cherry. That's beautiful. Uh, that's not how they made it when I was in Roma. Lisa, oh, tropical treat, Lisa, thank you. That's a beautiful looking smoothie. I knew it, I knew it. Can you imagine how good that shit would hit? She was wearing like a marathon bib. Holy cow. I bet a smoothie has never tasted as good as it does after you've just completed a 26.2 mile run. She probably drank that shit like in a second and a half before she even turned around. <laughs> Don't even get me started on your ass. Your ass is just wearing normal clothes. And then you had a large, she wanted a medium, you want a large, she just finished a marathon. 
What the hell have you ever done? Well, you needed a treat because you so, converted a Word document into a PDF today? We used to make things in this country. People used to, they used to work up an appetite, you know, working at the damn steel mill and, and farming and stuff like that. Was your ass just sold two used cars? Get a clue. I work for Carvana and I feel so attacked right now. We got a, we got a Carvana worker. We got a Peloton worker in chat. This is not meant to be an insulting question. Anybody work at a company whose stock price has not cratered 95% over the last two and a half years? Sorry, I'm sorry! It's just the first thing that came to mind. No, I work in real estate. I did listen! I love my Peloton. If Peloton goes under, will your bike just lock up? I mean, by all accounts, the company is at least alive and it still locks up sometimes, so... I imagine if the company goes out of business, I'm gonna have to fucking jailbreak it just to get the pedals to turn. No offense to the person in chat who works at Peloton, okay? I'm sure that you're not responsible for the fact that it locks up. Probably is the fact that, like, my ass sweats on the Peloton and then, like, the steel is not going anywhere, but the fucking... You know, the little Android tablet that's on the top of it is made with the cheapest parts you could ever make of all time. Like, it's not meant to hand uh, to stand up to that kind of rigor. But could you at least... Listen, if, if, if Peloton employee is here today, I got a couple of uh, tips for you, okay? These are... I mean, they might get you fired because the squeaky wheel gets the, the boots sometimes. Step one... Great thing for the Peloton, sweat resistant screen. Because sometimes when I'm riding, even my hands get sweaty. And then I'm trying to like tap stuff on the screen to get all the fucking gamification out of the way. And it's like using your phone screen when there's a drop of water on it. It's like when you touch it, the capacitive touch like hits everything. We need sweat resistant screens ASAP. I don't know if there's any technology that does that. Get a towel. Bro, my towel is sweaty too. This isn't, your, you know, your mom's cardio. We're not working up a light sweat. We're leaving a puddle on the ground. Get another towel? How about I get another bike, Peloton? And you start listening to user stories instead of telling me, oh, we, we tried nothing, we're all out of ideas. There's no lunk alarm in this gym, okay? What's your average output on each ride? Last five days, because I've been a little sick, I wasn't worried about intervals or like doing a super long ride. I did 90 minutes, three rides, and just did what the instructors called out. Average output, 205. Just trying to take it a little easy. Hang on, voice is getting scratchy again. Let me get some water. Water, low. So-called chilled dudes when you mention that you drink sparkling water. I would suck up, why don't you just drink, personally, I would just drink the stuff that comes out of the tap. Okay, then fucking do it. It's your throat, dummy. Are you not a G Fuel guy? We don't want to go down this road. I'm playing with Dan tomorrow. They beat the lead allegations. I'll give them that. Aren't you worried about the sodium content in sparkling water? This, refer back to a, a joke that I, I talk about now and then. Motherfuckers will really drink eight IPAs a day, but Google how many sparkling waters a day is it okay to drink? And then you, just go ahead and reply. Straw man, straw man. Yeah, that's me, but you didn't know that it was me, so that's a straw man. Did you enjoy beer at first? Um, the taste? Not really, but also, like, most people, when you start drinking beer, you drink, like, the cheapest beer that you could find, which is pretty bad. Like, even to somebody who likes the taste of beer, they wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, give me, like, a James Ready 5.5. 
Hey, can I get a fax ice, please? But like, if you don't like the taste of beer, you shouldn't force yourself to drink it until you like it. You should just not drink. And then, you know, pick another vice or, or don't. Alcohol is the best vice. Listen, I got myself into trouble with this before. <laughs> I believe it. I, I learned my lesson. <clears throat> We're not going to do a vices tier list. You want a large, sorry. It'll be like the execution tier list as well. Prone with, uh, for, rife for bad faith takes. All I said, I did not say that it's okay to be an alcoholic. All I said was that at least alcohol takes a little while to completely irrevocably ruin your life. Whereas with gambling, it could ruin it like the first time that you do it. That's all I said, okay? I did not say quit gambling and start drinking. I mean, that you gotta be this one. You gotta be this one. Yes! I think it's kind of cute that they go out to get a milkshake dressed as the milkshake that they're going to get. We need stuff like that in our lives. People, they live, they live too big now. Every day, they're concerned with the whole world. And they're miserable. We need to bring it back. You need to use the fine adjustment lens on the microscope. And just worry about your day... Your area, you can think about the world from time to time, don't get me wrong. But instead of being like, hey, why you feel so down today? Oh, some idiot in San Francisco made a TikTok about how to make sparkling water. And the secret was she uses a soda stream. Instead, just be like, yo, do you want to go get pizza for lunch? I'll wear red shirt and yellow pants. I'm going to look like a pizza while I eat pizza. I think we'd all be a little happier. Except for the people that are living in the parts that are making the rest of the world miserable. Because <laughs> you gotta deal with that shit. But I have the luxury of not having to deal with it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I get to dress like a pizza and eat a slice of pizza. It's 2 p.m. Isn't it already time for bed, bald man? <clears throat> One moment, please. You're lucky. You're lucky enough people typed hide him. Let's farm a little. No, we can't farm sap. I gotta play meet your maker so I know what I'm doing. To they specifically said, please play a little meet your maker before tomorrow so you know what's going on. And I'll tell you, Dan is not gonna play it. There's no way. Dan is the, and I love him for it, and I love him in spite of it. Dan is the kind of guy who will read something like that and be like, that only applies to other people I'm built different. He's the kind, he knows that I'm going to play it. So he thinks that I, me playing it means he doesn't have to play it because I can just carry him. What he doesn't understand is that because we spend fucking. 45 minutes teaching them where the like drop turret button is that we're going to get our asses beat. But if I try to get one over on him and go, oh, I didn't play it either, then we're both going to get fucked. So I got to at least try. Your advisors are at your command. Clones with special immunities. <laughs> Crota. <laughs> Sorry. Metamorph. Sorry, I farted. Crona. <laughs> Through them, I will take the next step in evolution, and a cure will be born. Jeez, you sure like to talk about yourself, huh? Genetic material lies deep in the wasteland. It lies deep in my Seize waistband. It. <laughs> More like. I, was, uh, I just gotta activate the Come command the center real quick if you guys don't mind. Stop at nothing to find a cure. Destroying traps. Use your weapon to destroy traps. This permanently disables them. Get owned? 
you will find synthite as you raid. It's used to build outposts. You just know that tomorrow Dan's gonna ask me for all my freaking synthite, dude. And I'm gonna be like, no, you can't have it. I need it. I worked for it. And I'm gonna fucking give it to him. And then I'm gonna give him the synthite. Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> the direction I did not look. Biggest miss of your life. I got all my ammo. Okay, we're ready to go. You know what? I'm taking the stairs. Oh! I got a Charlie horse. It scared me so bad. I got a Charlie horse. Oh! Oh! Oh, my leg. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> this hurts so bad. Oh, okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. You just gotta... Whoo! You just gotta stretch it out a little bit. I'm too old, man. Me and Dan, we... Listen... He's, he better pop off tomorrow, or we're in a lot of trouble. Oh, man. Bit by bit. <laughs> the hell was that? Oh! That's <laughs> right underneath me. I'm fucked, dude. I'm so screwed. The gen mad. The gen mad. Uh, oh! <laughs> <That's> so creepy. <laughs> oh man. I just like I am like a. You're right. I'm a moth. I just like a moth to the flame. <laughs> It's an actual child. Surely they didn't put a trap right next to the gen man. Oh, man. Owned. Owned. Never mind about that whole owned thing. I died to the card. Oh, dude, we're gonna get fucking smoked, man. What's on my C? Some kind of grenade? Maybe a shield? <laughs> yeah, shields! <laughs> I panicked. I was like, if a trap tries to... If I get the, the alert that a trap is going to hit me, then I'm going to press C to deploy this. Maybe it's a shield. Instead, I threw a grenade. <laughs> Killed myself. You stink. I've been here. I've been here. I, I saw this. Note to self when building. Place traps behind your opponent. Behind and above. You'll never see it coming. Streamers just hold W and walk forward. Their situational... Their situational awareness is not very good. Myself included, by the way. No, oh, you fucking gen mat. <laughs> What did I tell you? I already feel pretty good. But I'm sure tomorrow I will sound better as well. See ya! Like Prozac, the Canadian cartoon band said, uh, I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna sleep with myself tonight. No one else can harm me. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Do you guys ever listen to Prozac when they went through their weird abstinence era? Although I'm really quite fond of you. My best intentions never turn out right I'm gonna sleep with your dad tonight <laughs> Uh oh Sorry, sorry